Buried in this desert, our ancestors built a great machine. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to cover what happened to the Star Harvester after Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. But in order to understand what happened to it, we first need to know what it is and how it came to be. The Star Harvester was introduced to us in the second Transformers film, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. We learn from Jetfire that its purpose was to harvest Energon by destroying suns. He also tells us that it was created by the original Seven Primes, who were the original leaders of Cybertron. The Primes set out with one rule, never destroy a planet with life. However, one of them tried to defy this rule, and his name forevermore was The Fallen. You see, during 17,000 BC, ancient beings known as the Seven Primes reached our solar system in their quest to build a star harvester. But when they discovered that the chosen system contained a life-bearing world, six of the Primes objected to using the harvester on the system's sun. The seventh, however, insisted on using the harvester anyway, upon weighing the longevity of his planet and his race against a seemingly meaningless organic world. This Prime, by the name of Megatronus, quickly turned on his brothers and their creed, raging war against them, with those who agreed with his ideals by his side. After attacking and killing many of his fellow Cybertronians and slaughtering a large number of early humans, he was thereafter ever known as the Fallen. The remaining Primes mounted an attack on their new nemesis, and hid the Matrix of Leadership. Without it, the Fallen could not activate the Harvester. In a tomb composed of their very own bodies, on the very planet he sought to destroy, the Six Primes used the last of their energy left from the battle to completely seal it. Sometime after the battle concluded, the Fallen forged the Decepticon faction and dispatched many Seekers to locate the Matrix. Jetfire was one such Seeker dispatched by the Fallen. However, he and the other Seekers were unable to locate the tomb that the Primes had forged. The only clue that they had was a riddle. When the dawn alights the dagger's tip, three kings will reveal the doorway. Eventually, the Fallen abandoned the Seekers and they were forced to go into stasis lock due to a lack of Energon. Sometime after the horrific battle which saw the death of the Dynasty of Primes, humans began to build a pyramid over the Star Harvester, sealing it away for millennia, which now takes us up to the events of Revenge of the Fallen. Leading up to the final battle, Megatron ordered Devastator to dig out the Star Harvester, and by utilizing his Vortex Grinder, he was able to suck up and destroy the stones that hit the Harvester with ease. Right before the final battle, Jetfire was mortally wounded by Scorponok and Optimus Prime was revived by the Matrix. However, he was in no shape to take on Megatron and the Fallen at once. After the Fallen came down and snatched the Matrix from Optimus, he finally was able to achieve his goal of activating the Harvester. Knowing that only a Prime could defeat the Fallen, Jetfire, who felt that he never did something worth doing his entire Decepticon life, decided to make the ultimate sacrifice by offering his parts to Optimus Prime. And his sacrifice would not be in vain, since with Jetfire's parts, Optimus was able to kill the Fallen, stop Megatron, and permanently shut down the Star Harvester. However, this wouldn't be the end for the Harvester because it would later reappear in the fifth and final installment of the Bayverse, Transformers The Last Night. When the Mad Goddess Quintessa took control of Cybertron, she used electro-telekinetic technology to deliver a broken Cybertron in fragments to encase the Earth. One of these fragments collided with the remains of the Harvester housed within the Great Pyramid of Giza, destroying both of them in one fell swoop. However, something interesting to note here is that the top of the pyramid is still destroyed. You would think that the governments of Egypt and the United States would attempt to rebuild the pyramid in order to cover up this event, since if the public found out that a doomsday device created by transforming alien robots was buried inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza, all hell would break loose. However, the reason why they did not cover up this event was because earlier in Revenge of the Fallen, thanks to the help of Megatron and Soundwave, the Fallen was able to tap into Earth's communication network and announce to the world that Cybertronians had been living among them in secret and that the governments of the world had been hiding their existence. At this point, there was no reason to cover up what happened since now the whole world knew about the Transformers, and details about what exactly went down in Egypt would inevitably leak to the public. And if you don't believe me, in Transformers Dark of the Moon, the public was well aware about what went down in Egypt. Seymour Simmons capitalized off of his adventures in Egypt, becoming a millionaire after writing the best-selling book, Codename Hero. This book was so popular that it was covered on Bill O'Reilly's show, The O'Reilly Factor. 
Furthermore, Simmons had a book signing planned and was preparing to pitch a reality TV show to the Discovery Channel. In addition to this, Sam Witwicky was given a medal from Barack Obama to commend him for his involvement in two events which saved the world from the Decepticons. Sam would often flex this medal, hoping it would have offered him more leverage into employment. And interestingly enough, despite him flexing it, it seems like Sam wasn't allowed to explain what he got it for based upon this line in the film. Mister, I saved your life twice. Okay, I can't tell you how or when or why, but I have done shit that matters and I just kind of like a job where I matter again. Despite Sam's involvement with the Autobots supposedly being classified, images would eventually leak showing Sam with them. And we know this since Jerry Wing was able to view photos with Sam in them. Slow down, Tiger. You showed up in the back of six different photos, two continents with aliens. That was you in Egypt, huh? Now another thing I would like to cover is how the public viewed the Great Pyramid of Giza after its terrifying secret came out. And, well, I believe tourism for the pyramid significantly spiked after the age-old conspiracy of aliens building the pyramids came true. According to a 2021 Reuters article, tourism makes up 15% of Egypt's GDP. Tourism revenues were between 3.5 billion to 4 billion during the first half of 2021. And the country received about 3.5 million tourists from January to June. As you can see, tourism generates a lot of money for Egypt. So if we apply that to the Transformers movie universe, it would be a no-brainer for the Egyptian government to keep the pyramid destroyed in order to capitalize off of its alien nature. Now the second to last thing I want to cover is the misconception that the Star Harvester appeared in Transformers Dark of the Moon. According to TF Wiki, the tip of the machine's firing mechanism was used as a stake to hold up Megatron's tent. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. Since if you put this stake side by side with the tip of the harvester, they are sadly not a match. It's actually held up by one of the blasters from a Decepticon orbital assault carrier. This can be proven since if we look at this shot, we can see that the blaster from the carrier is on the lower right. If we compare it to the stake holding up Megatron's tent, they both have this silver cylinder piece at the top, followed by a gray square-like piece that has this great looking part behind it. Furthermore, this rod right here is the side minigun of the carrier, so as cool as it would have been for this to be the tip of the harvester, it sadly isn't. Now the last and final thing I want to cover is the name of the Star Harvester. The Star Harvester is never actually referred to by name in the Revenge of the Fallen movie, or any of the films released after it. It is only referred to by Jetfire as a great machine, that deadly machine, or simply that machine. Likewise, the movie's novelization names it as the Great Machine. The more formal name of Star Harvester originates from the tie-in comics released for Revenge of the Fallen by IDW Publishing. And just like that, now you know what happened to the Star Harvester after Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.